Hello guys, hello everyone, here comes the third and the last Fender Blister video tutorial. On completion of this last part, we will have the finished and confident geometry, and we will finally be able to move on to the bottom bumper area. Before we start, what is your opinion about our topology in terms of quality at the moment? Are you happy with the result? Would you change anything? Would you follow my workflow 100% or maybe there is something you would do differently? Is comb curvature that is sort of G3 good enough? How would you achieve even more of lead-in if necessary? Even better G3? Which CVs would you modify? If you want, you can also get a proper insight into our work in progress. Just download the final model and scan data. In the video description below, you can find a URL address that will take you straight to the download station. The data is there for you to grab for free. Also, if you like my UI look, you can download my preferences of the link below. It is always good to compare your model with the images of the actual car. Here, you can see that the general feeling is good. Our surfaces really look like a real deal. Well, at least to me. I hope that to you, they look decent too. But it's no surprise, after all, we were working to the scan data and we didn't deviate much. Remember that deviation was about one millimeter. We are ready to create our last portion of fender surfaces. If it was you, how would you approach this problem? How would you create this blend? Would you use a blend tool? I know what many people would go for. They would probably remove spans and keep aligning to achieve a nice comb curvature between here and G2 connection there. This is the way to go forward, but I think it would definitely take a lot of time to get these two surfaces work with our existing patch and be true to our scan. I'm not saying that this would be a bad method, I just want to introduce something else to you. I call it a pyramid method. Basically, we start wide and loose and slowly move forward to become narrow and accurate. We create a loose surface and manually adjust CVs. As I get closer to desired shape, I can even add spans to achieve decent form. I walk through the sculpting process with just single patch and only when I'm sure it is very close to what I want will I detach it. Just watch me doing it and you can give it a try later on. This method works well for me. How about duplicating this curve? Move our copied curve away and template our original curve back to where it was. We can try to detach this curve and delete the bit we don't need. Do you know what I'm trying to do by now? I have this curve very close to our geometry. First, let's just quickly align it to the existing surface. Check the comb curvature and adjust it if necessary. I think it looks fine. Ok, so let's perform projection and trimming. Now, move this curve to the trimmed edge. First bottom CV, we can snap a line to the edge. The curve should be as close to the trimmed edge as possible. I'm building geometry this way because I want to have one continuous surface rather than having two or more separate patches and having to work with them separately. I am beginning to build the last fender patch. 
But wait a minute, I think I'd like to have a curve that is perpendicular to edge in here. To accomplish that, I use a blend tool to be my reference anchor point. Then I simply draw one curve from here to here, without worrying about adding any degrees as yet. I use a square tool to patch this area up. All the curves can be template and placed on a layer. Don't delete them, you might need them later on. I'm using my tricks just to improve this patch. I planarize holes in side view and make all CVs look neat. Manual tweaking is never enough. Push out our surface to match the scan as much as possible. Don't worry about continuity. Just try to match Zebra, keeping in mind that your patch mustn't deviate from the scan. I always underline this because it is actually possible to achieve a very close Zebra representation without staying true to the scan. In this case, we would end up with good reflection, but bad volume model. As you can see, our wheel arch wasn't that accurate. Just do what you feel is right. Push this out and don't worry about the gap around the wheel arch. The principle is, if you see deviation, just fix it. If you are afraid of remodeling the wheel arch surface, you just accumulate problems for later to strike you back. We are closing to the most difficult part of the modeling process and the truth time is approaching. In fact, the truth is kind of bitter because our surfaces, especially the zebra stripes, don't match. Ok, let's tweak geometry around and see what we will come up with. Can you see this zebra flick? I can tell you that it will probably be very difficult to fix. Just a quick reminder, if you come across a situation when you perform a comb curvature analysis on two separate surfaces and they have opposite orientations, just use this tool to swap U and V directions of one of them. When I tweak this patch, I try to not touch the left portion of it because I kind of like the G2, G3 condition over here and I don't want to destroy it. Having said that though, I can do a lot of manual work on the right side over here. I like to slide CVs because sliding won't affect continuity too much. Also, CVs will still look good in a side view as I slide along a hole and not at a random direction. Let's copy and paste this patch to get a backup. And after that template the copy. Create the backup just in case if our destructive idea doesn't work. What we are going to do is to destroy the patch by detaching it. Ok, so grab the detach tool, press and hold control button to separate the patches at the desired location to obtain more sculptability. Our desired location is here. Align both patches G2 and don't worry if you don't achieve continuity. Just keep our surface degrees 5 for now. Just remember to keep it simple. Now, let's examine the result. What do you think? Do you see the zebra representation here? Well, I think that this doesn't look good. Ok, so let's delete our two patches we just created and paste our backup surface in. Don't worry, we have all day to try and error. Let's do detaching again. By the way, can you anticipate what I'm trying to do next? 
I just realized that aligning both patches doesn't make much sense because our zebra stripes get destroyed. So I just aligned the left patch and I will be working on the right patch manually with a, with a different workflow approach. Right patch looks good. Let's try to align the left side to the right side. And while I'm doing this, I will probably need to blend a couple of extra CV rows with me. Result, it's still not very accurate. Maybe sliding will help. In this situation, having an active history is very helpful. This highlight is still not exactly what we are after. Let's see what we can do to improve it. I'm just arranging CVs slightly better. And at the same time I'm paying attention to the zebra. At this moment you must have noticed that reverse surfacing is all about three things. One, adherence to zebra. Two, closeness to scan. And three, a good CV layout. Just observe how CVs behave and how they can be manipulated. A quick look at Zebra will make you realize that this is not exactly how it is supposed to be, especially in here. Observing and noticing things to improve can be done by almost anybody. Everyone can say that something needs to be better, but coming up with a solution to eliminate these problems and putting an efficient strategy into practice, it's always more difficult. I think we need to push this edge out by just a little. Can you see? This patch is dipping in too much. I believe that sliding these CVs will help our highlight. Just remember to grab a top arrow when sliding. I think we are getting very close, or we could even call it a day. Having said that though, I can see now that we have deviated a little bit too much. Ok, this is all for CV sliding. If we really wanted to, we could play with this all day, just to make it perfect. The last thing is to check the deviation map. Do we have green color everywhere? Pretty much yes, except for the fuel cap. Guess what? We need to go back and tweak surfaces we built in previous video. But not the whole geometry. We will detach the corner blend and work on a better transition. But before that, just copy and back up your corner blend surface. Let's trim convert this patch. Sometimes this tool doesn't work. When you run into troubles of not being able to use the Trim Convert tool, just make sure that the patch you want to convert is of four sides. Sometimes when COS, the uh, curve on surface, runs into a corner, there might be a short section of an edge invisible to your eyes. This will make the surface five-sided. Just extend the COS and if you need, the patch as well. As you can see, we have some wobbling within the geometry. I think I will just delete the surface and try something else. Instead of the previous strategy, I think I'm going to extend this top patch with merge off to somewhere here and try my luck again. Uh, by the way, can you anticipate what my workflow is going to be? I'm going to align this to that. We lost highlight continuity here. But don't worry about it at the moment. We will work on this in a minute. Behind the scenes, I fixed the highlight problem. Basically, I made a very good connection between these two surfaces. Ok, let's turn on the curvature cone to examine our geometry.
and see if we can enjoy a G3 connection. It looks like we still have some minor dips and bulges here and there. In fact, we could manipulate geometry further to remove the issues, but I think I would just leave it off like that. Maybe you can give it a go. If you want, you can just download my model data, which is available on my blog. Now it becomes clear that this intersection is the most crucial one in this model. We have something that looks like a spider net where interconnecting patches don't follow the geometry flow and their CVs run in different directions. In situations like that, it is always difficult, however, not impossible. It is not impossible to come up with a good solution. Here, I think that the patch layout was crucial. If you get a patch layout wrong, you can just spend time trying to manipulate geometry that doesn't want to play together. Having said that though, don't be afraid to follow your workflow idea, even if it might not be 100% correct. Just remember that without building this model, which is a first stage model, we would have nothing to look at and we couldn't draw conclusions. Because we have reached this stage with actually a really good model, this is a very good foundation for more future improvements. Now we are able to go further by incorporating changes and introducing consecutive iterations. Compare geometry to the scan data for the last time and also think what went wrong. Generally, our model is not too bad. There are some discrepancies here and there, but generally, really not too bad. We can see that Scan is doing something slightly different to what our surface is doing. Do you have any improvement ideas for this zebra here? How about making some surfaces longer, other surfaces maybe shorter a bit? Usually, in situations like that, extending Shortening and sliding helps a lot. I reckon that we should pull this area out a little bit and move this patch further backwards so it starts somewhere maybe here. By doing so, I bet we can remove this highlight bulge in here. Or in other words, we need more of the fender surface and less of the corner surface to improve the zebra. But for now, we will just leave it like this. In the meantime, I trimmed this edge so we roughly know where our bottom bumper is going to be located. See, these look like this. Yes, I know, of course, too many, I think maybe nine, but they can be easily reduced to probably five on each patch. Nevertheless, they are pretty and can stay. So this is our final model. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope it was helpful and please like and subscribe. If you subscribe, it helps me and keeps me motivated to produce more of such videos. If you have any suggestions, please drop me a line with some positively inspiring commentary. See you soon next week, stay tuned, bye bye.